Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and I'm going to Joule! Um, for reasons other than just it's the furthest planet away, so I thought I'd give that a go. Um, it's also one of the places with uh, a body of water, so as you all know, I'm, I'm quite into this submarine thing at the moment. Not with a mod, just trying to push myself under the water. Um, so, lithe, lathe, lith, however you pronounce that, the, it, that, that's the one I'm going for in particular, or rather, that's the first moon I'm going for. Um, and obviously, before we send Kerbals, I need to send some probes to get some data. Because, uh, like, I know it's all available on the wiki. Oh, wait, so funny. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Uh, I know it's all available on the wiki as we pick up this flight uh, uh, at the same sort of place but it's nothing quite like sending your robots out to, to do it yourself. I'm much happier with that, that separation, nice and clean there and we get to watch the little decoupler float down before me. Um, for some mad and insane reason I decide that three, four kilometres is the ideal spot to release my parachute no it's not that just means you wait forever i mean this is like double time accelerated like in editing and it, it's still oh, vast vast expanses of time and then uh, like 500 meters doesn't sound a lot but when your parachute's open that's a long way to fall but here we go in with my uh my little submariner probe and any second now i'm gonna touch down i i like the little light cluster i had on the bottom there unfortunately uh, as you're about to see here, that number of engines doesn't quite cut it. So I need more engines. See, it's just, it's just not the depth that I'm used to from, from my probes. I like a deep probing, you know. So here we go with my retweaked, revised, all round better, apart from I took the lights off probe. I will try and fit some lights on some of my ships at some point i know it's one of my great big failings of building um but you know that just means you have to uh, know your sun timetable sun timetable yeah when, when the sun's in the air um you notice that i've not opened my parachute even now 300 meters 200 meters 100 meters just about 100 meters i decided to open my parachute mainly because i was bored of waiting for my spaceships to fall out of the air um I, I'm a very, very impatient person. Like, even that, that's just too long. Right, here we go. Coming up for a, a, a nice push. Perfectly under. We lost my parachute there, and we made it a full 41 meters up in the air. So I take that as a success for the probe that's going to see how much underwater we can get on life. Yeah. So then I decide, hey, I'm, I need a flying probe as well, and try and do this double launch system for testing. It really, yeah, that, that that doesn't work well. So I scrapped that and started working on a uh, on on the launcher, the thing that's going to get all my probes and hopefully interplanetary space vessel into into the orbit. But nah, nah, I I messed that one up quite. Whoa! And we have some volume on this one. Unfortunately, uh, my ship managed to shake itself apart. Um, so I went and tweaked with the design a little bit more. Basically just threw struts up between everything. And I came up with this beauty. Now I like to call this the, what, extended asparagus. Um, you, you'll notice in a second that I haven't quite got the staging set up right on this. Though on the final, final one, I promise you I have. Um, the little tanks on the outside are supposed to like peel away. It, it's just to take that little bit extra fuel up with me and have the mass dumpable quite early. The thing, I, I can never remember which order I've set stuff up, so I'm kind of searching around now trying to find the one that's, that's emptying. There we go. But unfortunately, you see on the left, I've got the three, that one there that I'm playing with. I'm just going to move that out of the way because that's the quickest fix I can think of whilst we're mid-launch. And from here on in, we pretty much have a perfect test flight. Everything stays straight, we've got nothing shaking apart. Um, also, I'd like to point out on top about the probe setup that I've got. Um, the, obviously, I've got the Submariner on there, but I've also got two other probes. They're not the probes I'm going to be using. They're just generic placeholders to um, fill the space that the other probes would take up. Um, they're the same weight, same shape. I mean, in any other situation, these would be perfectly serviceable probes, but I've got a rather specific mission outline in mind, so I've got to get take specific probes with me. The right probe for the right job and all that. Um, 
and I actually leave it somewhere about here because I'm like yeah yeah this all works out fine I've got got a little bit of staging to do but that's it okay and because I can never work on a single project for more than two seconds at a time here is my small flying pro uh, this is to get atmospheric data to see how thick it is so that I know how much thrust I need to get off of lies because I'm really not abandoning the Kerbal on the small rock out in the middle of nowhere it's just not right guys it's not right I've seen I've seen people do it and uh, like can you not even send a missile up to wipe him out and end his pathetic lonely soul shatteringly something existence yes eloquence what I'm known for um, this was a fairly all right design apart from the only thing is it just wanted to like nose up all the time I, I couldn't do anything about it. I, sh I tried shifting things around but there's not really a lot of like heavier bits on here to move to the front and try and get it to nose down uh, that in the end was actually why I decided this this design will not stand will not stand uh, so I just go for a bit of a fly around straight up because that's all it can do though I th these little radial ant engines that fuel consumption is amazing if I if I can get that onto more of my probes I, I think that I will be a slightly more efficient prober all round. Here comes the floor. Boom. That's the only problem with them. If you're in a nose dive, you cannot pull out. Uh, here's my next design. Goes well, as you can tell. So I decided to stick a rocket underneath it and throw it up in the air. Um, and from here on in, actually, it's amazing. Um, oh, no. In fact, this one wasn't. This was a nightmare is putting it lightly. Like I'm trying to face up towards my direction of travel, you know, the, the, the yellow circle. And no matter what I do, it's just not going there. You can see my, my flaps are go, uh, uh, going like crazy. Oh, hello. And the engines are going like crazy here as well. Um, but even powered, it's just not, I, I've got no control, no control whatsoever. Um, what I find out what it actually is is because I was more than a little bit unbalanced um, as my next one will demonstrate so this one is I'm not, I'm not going to say almost exactly the same design but it is almost exactly the same design uh, the only thing is I've reshuffled things around I've like moved the, uh, the probe forwards a bit I've taken the battery backwards um, just moved the wings well winglets ever so slightly um, and it just goes to show the fickle nature of atmospheric turbulence on Kerbal, um, Kerbin. Because uh, this, this is flying perfectly. Even to the point where I'm like, yeah, I'm flying well. Let, let's get some science on the go. Uh, you'll notice the Gravitron tw uh, 2000. I feel it is a, a must have on any science mission. So you can actually look back at something when you crash instead of going, what were those numbers? Um, I, do, I, do, I actually really think that's one of the most useful things on here. Um, and yeah, now I basically glide all the way down. Um, I'm not sure about the usefulness of that docking port on the back there. You'll notice that my winglets actually intersect through the model. So uh, I, I haven't really had a chance to test that yet because, it, you know, how, how do you test that? Uh, it's really only for refueling purposes in case I just manage somehow to get it down on the floor and close to some sort of refueling station. I don't think that's going to happen, but you've got to apply for these sort of things, haven't you? So, taking the uh, Submariner probe, the flying probe, and a small scanning probe, which I've put a Keythane um, scanner and an ISA map scanner on, I send these off to the Yonder. Um, I have absolutely no idea whether this has enough oomph to actually get all the way to uh, Jewel in Life. Um, I have included a lot of docking ports on all the parts in here, so when I do get up into orbit, as I will do after this, um, I can uh, refuel, reshape. Um, I've even uh, toying with the idea of sending up a other interplanetary vessel, um, which, uh, as you will see, my middle core has got a lot of fuel left on it. So if I can launch the interplanetary vessel on its own fuel and then refuel with the core of this, I feel I will be laughing. Um, I read somewhere that I need something along the lines of 400, and, uh, sorry, 4,100 Delta V, uh, and the Kerbal Flight Engineer uh, mod plugin thing 
told me that this currently has 12,000. So I, I think it should make it, unless I read it completely wrong like I normally do and it's only 1,000. But I'll find that out next time. Um, yeah, I, I think my main problem with getting to Jewel is going to be not getting to Jewel, but stopping once I'm there. Uh, my plan is to perform a nifty double aero break because obviously Joule is just a, a gas giant so if I can aero break in Joule's atmosphere that would be great and then obviously Lithe has got quite a, uh, a sizable atmosphere itself I've, so I've heard. Um, you'll notice that I'm using the VOID, the Vessel Orbitary Orbital Information Display uh, on, on the corner of my screen there. Uh, that is merely just so that I can keep in this view and have something to look at whilst like not having to flip back and forth to my map to check where my um, apoapsis and perihelion are um, as it turns out at the end of this one I'll, I'll point out when it happens I end up looking at the wrong number anyway so I end up in a much more wildly eccentric orbit than what I was aiming for so you heard me talk about this specific mission objectives you might be wondering what I'm actually going to be doing in this sort of I don't know what mini series is it the this little this mission to to, to jewel um well first off i want to go and just basically get some basic stats about the place you know I, i'm a bit of a science nut and i like just you know making graphs about things in games uh I, yeah it makes me makes me smile it's great uh i'm just doing a bit of a circularization of my orbit here um which is ridiculous because when when i come around to actually do that burn uh i i just ignore all the markers that i set down for myself and just carry on burning through but yeah um after i send the probes i really want to send jeb up to go do um some submarining in the oceans of light of lathe live lith if, if you know how to pronounce it properly could you just like drop me into the comments uh that, that'd be quite good thank you um and then I'd like to do, um, depending on whether I take any keythane stuff with me or not, I'd like to do the uh, tour of all the Easter eggs that I can find out there. Um, I hear there's some nice uh, monuments to other famous scientists out that way and stuff, but I'm not going to spoil by telling you what they are. You can go on that beautiful discovery with me. So I'm just circularizing my orbit now. Um, watching that green bar go down for a little bit before you notice that my mouse goes across to the orbital information and then I start looking at the wrong numbers and completely lose track of what I'm doing because you know I like to finish strong on an episode yeah I, I always like to show my skills and and all my strengths um, and with that thank you very much for joining me for this adventure guys I hope to be back really shortly for the uh, transfer orbit and hopefully maybe well you've seen the testing of the submarines we'll be doing some more of that thank you very much and goodbye